a nice Norwegian town with nice Norwegian people. I came home after school one day and took a nap. My nap was interrupted by a gruesome sound of a girl screaming, struggling to shout the words, please stop. I got up and slowly walked towards the sound that made my heart beat fast and hard. In the living room, I saw my mother and a woman. My mother's face was terrified and sad, but the woman's face was ice cold. Their eyes were glued on the TV and they were watching a video of a girl screaming from pain because she was held down by four women. One of them was cutting in the little girl's vaginal area. Step by step, she removed parts of her. In panic, I ran to my mother and screamed, turn it off. I did everything in my power to scream louder than that girl. The woman got angry at me and told me, you must sit down and watch with us. This is normal. I looked at my mother in horror, and she turned it off and gave me a hug. The little girl in the video was approximately my age at that time, and I couldn't understand why anybody would hurt her. Female genital mutilation is a tradition done to young girls, FGM for short. The three main types of FGM is type one, cutting away the clitoris. Type two, cutting away the clitoris and inner lips, called labia minora. And type three, which was happening to this little girl, was cutting away the clitoris, inner lips, and outer lips, and sewing what's left of her together, only leaving a small opening for urine and menstruation. This type is very common in Somalia and in many other countries. In fact, FGM is practiced in over 27 countries and 98%, let me repeat that number, 98% of women in Somalia have undergone FGM. Most of them is type three. What's happened to this little girl has happened to over 2,000 million girls. And it's still happening today as we speak. It's to, it's to control women's sexuality and it's done to women by women. I have two questions for you today. How many of you feel sorry for the little girl in that video? Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and how many of you feel sorry for the circumciser? I see a couple of hands. My mother was circumcised when she was only nine years old. Then, at that age, she made the most professional decision she could come up with. Become the mayor, collect an army, and travel to all countries FGM is performed, and kill all circumcisers. Well, obviously this didn't happen, thank God. <laughs> Instead of becoming mayor, she became the midwife. Instead of killing circumcisers, she tried to educate and help them. That day, I woke up 
from my nap of that girl screaming was my mother using one of her strategies, which was showing a video, which I'm not gonna do right now, <laughs> showing a video of the ritual to prevent mothers in the Norwegian society from traveling back to their home countries and circumcising their daughters. I am so proud of my mother and therefore I chose to follow in her footsteps. Since I started working against FGM, I came to see the lack of attention circumcisers got. Everyone is focusing on the different parties involved. But why have we chosen to exclude the circumcisers? They're very much involved. Many times, this profession is inherited by the mother or grandmother. They teach this to their daughters when they're only 15 years old. At that age, they go to work with their mothers or grandmothers, learning how to mutilate girls. Society would call them names such as dirty or cheap and their tribe is excluded from the rest of society. Because they can't afford education, they think that FGM is a religious practice, when in fact, it's not written in any holy scripture, such as the Quran or the Holy Bible at all. You see, people have reasons for the choices they make in life. We might not agree, but it's very important for us to try to understand those reasons before we point fingers or play the blame game. Those circumcisors, those girls could have been you. We don't choose the families we are born into. We don't choose the cultures we are raised in. The little girl in that video and her circumciser have something in common, believe it or not. They're both innocent. In different ways, yes, but they both think that this has to be done. So, I wanna ask you the same questions again. How many of you feel sorry for the little girl in the video? And how many of you feel sorry for the circumciser? I see more hands are up now. My mother is a great example of helping circumcisers. Seven years ago, she bought two sewing machines and paid for a six-month sewing course, and two women in the village stopped circumcising. They are forever grateful for her help, and as my mother always said, we must not give them the fish, but rather teach them how to fish. Of course, there are some people out there who wants to see the world burn, who cannot be reasoned with or helped, but I would love to believe that most criminals or the ones we stereotype as the bad guys can be helped by looking at them in a different way. But this can be difficult, and I've experienced it several times. The first time was when I went back to Somalia to uh, cover the current situation of FGM. We made the documentary movie, Mother's Faith, My Destiny. It was later on shown on Enerco, the Norwegian Broadcasting Cooperation, February 2017. When I asked the circumcisers why they circumcised, they answered my question with a question, do you prefer an open door or a closed door? Without thinking too much about this question, I said, I prefer an open door. In my head, 
I was thinking freedom, independence, and I can come and go as I want. But they laughed at me. They said, no, you prefer a closed door because a nobody can get in. They were referring to the vagina closed door, meaning a sued vagina. It was at this very moment, I found it very hard to empathize with them. The only one who needs to be reassured about a girl's virginity being intact is the future husband. And how do you think he opens her up? He takes a kitchen knife or forces his manhood through her flesh. The second time was when I went to Tanzania a couple of months ago. After the law that forbids FGM came in Tanzania, I learned that circumcisers have been neglected. I also found out that under interviews, when I asked them why they circumcised, they all had the same answer. We just want to contribute to our society in a positive way. And I would ask them, how? And their answer would be, to prevent our daughters from becoming prostitutes. They believe if a girl is not cut, she'll sleep around with everyone and become a prostitute. Or that the clitoris is so big, it'll grow like a penis. Or the clitoris is so dirty, it'll lead to never-ending infections. The one that shocked me the most was, if we do not cut our girls, they'll become dead as the parents. They believe if that a girl is not cut, the parents, the girl might die. They really believe in these myths The way that the government approached them was from an up and down attitude. They would come and say, what you're doing is wrong and you must stop or you'll go to jail. I believe when you want to change something, the way you approach that situation is critically important. How you educate is as important as the content of the education. Understanding their culture working with their local leaders, doing regular follow-ups after seminars, and finally giving them an alternative way of income is ideal here. The most important lesson I've learned would be always see people's actions in a different way instead of the one society has stereotyped for you. This is why I grew up helping both the bullied and the bullies. My mother's technique worked for her, and it worked for me while I was helping the bullies. It might just work for you too. The best feeling in the world was hearing a bully or the bad guy say, thank you for seeing me too. I must admit, it took him many years before he apologized to his victims and came to thank me for showing him kindness when no one else did. But the most important thing is that he recognized it, and that changed him. I have a challenge for you. From this day forward, I want you to think differently about the bad guys. Every time you hear something bad about someone or watch the news, I want you to take a deep breath and ask yourselves why. Why is this person doing this? When you understand why, I want you to look further than most people do. I want you to empathize with them too. I'm traveling to Tanzania to advocate for circumcisers. 
because changing mindsets need to happen there as well as here. After what I've told you during my speech, which I hope you're awake for still, have you changed your mind? Do you feel sorry for the circumcisers too? I really hope so. Try to become less judgmental and please integrate my message into different scenarios of your everyday life and see how it changes you. That change might be just beautiful and I promise you it's worth it. Before I end my talk, I just want you guys to make me a favor. If you could just all rise up, stand up. I have a surprise for somebody in the audience. My biggest hero, the woman who dedicated, who, who dedicated all her life to help people. My mother, please stand, give a standing ovation for her. Thank you so much.